So it's pretty well known that flowing things can transfer energy. A really common example of this is going to be an old mill on a river with a water wheel. The mill has a dam, it's backed up the water, and as the water flows over this wheel, it's going to give energy to the mill so the mill can do things like make flour or whatever it may be. In our cells, we have organelles, and so every, organ or every cell has a nucleus, it has ribosomes, and it has a thing called mitochondria, and actually multiple mitochondria. The mitochondria are sort of like the mills inside of our cells. Just like the mill we gave an example was powered by water, we have water wheels, so to speak, inside of the mitochondria of our cells. These wheels, when they turn, are what produce the energy our cells use. So if we look closer, we can see that we have these little loops inside of our mitochondria, the inner membrane, and on this inner membrane are the wheels, and behind the membrane is hydrogen. This hydrogen will flow past the wheel, making it turn, making it create energy. Oxygen we breathe in will pick up this hydrogen and will breathe out water, which is why we see water vapor in a cold day. The hydrogen itself came from our food and will breathe out CO2 after we've completely broken down that food. Flowing hydrogen is what powers the creation of ATP, which is our cell's energy, from ADP and PI. So again, if we look inside the mitochondria, we can see an inner membrane with the wheels or ATP synthase on them, and we can see hydrogen behind that membrane. Hydrogen flows past the wheel, the wheel turns, and the wheel will make ATP from ADP and PI. ADP and PI go into the wheel, and ATP comes out of the wheel. And again, ATP is the energy of our cells. It has power and it can provide energy to power cellular activity. In a way, ATP is sort of like a rechargeable battery. So imagine your standard rechargeable Duracell when it's charged is ATP and has three phosphates. An uncharged battery is like ADP and has two phosphates. 